in your book, you talk about specific things like this uh, selenium. You give specific doses, right? And in, in an actual yep. brand uh, that they could learn about more in your book, right? Right. Well, one of the things that I learned when you were doing anything is as I was doing the research over the years, I would pick up various um, studies that were done. And one of the studies that really impressed me was done by Dr. Donaldson at the Veterans Affairs Hospital in St. Louis in the late 70s, mid 70s, late 70s. These Mm -hmm. were 140 veterans, all of whom had had um, some form of cancer. They had had every treatment that was available, chemo, surgery, uh, radiation, whatever, or whatever combination that was used in those days, and it totally failed. The cancer had come back and had progressed to the point where within a couple of weeks, in many cases, these people were expected to die. And Donaldson believed that selenium would work. It had been used as far back as 1911. He had found some of the original research where they used to actually inject a form of selenium that you wouldn't dare do now, but which they didn't know was would how it would actually kill people then but they used to inject it directly into tumors that had broken through the skin and they would it, the, the selenium would liquefy the tumors literally the tumor would flow out of the person wow. and they uh, gave these 140 vets the opportunity to have selenium as the only thing of a treatment to try and prove that it might work about a year and a half into the study, Dr. Donaldson died. I believe it was in a car accident. So the proper study with all the breakdown of who got what and all the rest of it was never published. But we know the overall study said that four years after the study began, 106 of those 140 men, I believe they were all men because there were no women in the U.S. Armed Forces at, uh, in the Army in those days, mm-hmm. were still alive with no signs of cancer. They got between three and ten tablets of a, a selenium yeast tablet today, so that was a good one that I found. There was another study that I and I put that in the book. There was another study that I found that showed that cancer cells suck in selenium five thousand times faster than normal cells. So you can have selenium, and although in there are five forms of it, two of which are highly toxic, they're sort of like a rock salt form of it. Mm-hmm. Two of them are man-made amino acids that are attempt to duplicate what is found in the selenium yeast or in plants. They basically haven't been proven to have any cancer value yet. They're fairly expensive. And then there's the humble old yeast plant that has managed to do it better than any of the guys with the degrees. It sort of amazed me that a plant that has no IQ and no college degree can do better than anybody who uh, has uh, been a a researcher and and they've got billions of dollars for the research. And a little humble yeast, one-cell yeast plant with no IQ can actually make something that we can use that can kill cancer. Right. But that's, that's how it, good it's worked. And so the, the brand that, that I suggested was the stuff I was taking originally mm-hmm. and gave to Roger, but we found there was another brand that looked just as good, was labeled just the same, and it did nothing. When Roger, so I'm scared. I would be scared to recommend if somebody's life was on the line any other brand. Years from now, if I can find a bunch of people who have cancer, but it isn't life-threatening, we can say, would you try this and see if it works? But right now, it seems as though all the people that I'm finding uh, don't want to gamble. They've got cancer. They want to take care of it. They want something that is proven to work. And I, if I was in their shoes, I would want the same thing. If somebody said to me, well, Mr. Pendlebury, you're coming up for a kidney transplant. We have this high school student here who's interested in this, or we have this doctor who's done 500 of these. <laughs> you know, we'd like to have the high school student get some experience, but it's up to you. Right. Who do you think I'm going to pick? Yeah, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Uh, pretty obvious, right? Yeah. So I can't in good conscience recommend anything that I don't know has worked. I've had lots of people ask. There have been some offers to, mm-hmm. you, could you recommend this particular brand, please? Right. And I'm saying, I don't know. I have no proof. If we can find something where we've got somebody who's, that's made the difference to them i'd be glad to and years from now we'll probably have some of those but right now we don't have anything else and that's why i recommend it and you know you can buy it in the safeway stores i'm sure all the way across canada it's sold in most pharmacies all the way across canada and in my local safeway store here it's sold for 8.99 a bottle and at maximum dose that would last you for nine days you're looking at maybe 70 cents a day if you take one a day and you've got no cancer it should be preventative and there's a study in there where the arizona cancer institute combined with cornell university did a 10-year study 
And in that 10-year study, for the first four and a half years, they gave half of those 1,300 people one, one tablet, 200 micrograms of selenium a day mm -hmm. for four and a half years. And for the last five and a half years, they got a sugar pill. The other half just got a sugar pill all the way along. And at the end of the 10-year period, they stopped the study, which almost never happens. It was originally going to be a 20-year study. And they were looking to see if the selenium actually helped people not get skin cancer, because skin cancer was easy to detect and easy to deal with, because it's on the surface, it's the outside, everything is easy to see. Right. But when they found that the, at the 10-year point, they found that there were people who were in the study who had just this one tablet of selenium a day five and a half years ago was the last one they had. But they had 71% less prostate cancers, esophageal cancers were down 67%, colorectal cancers were down 62%, lung cancers were down 46% compared to the group of the people who didn't get any of the selenium at all. Now, one selenium tablet a day is a very small amount. You know, 80 years ago, you would get that much selenium in a single slice of whole wheat bread that was grown on the prairies or in the western United States. But as the selenium is taken out of the soil, and in the soil, there's probably at the most two teaspoons of selenium over a whole acre of ground. That's all that's usually there. Wow. But as it's taken out by cropping, the cancer rate has gone up. It used to be one in 80 in the early 1900s. One person in 80 in Canada would get cancer in the 1800s. Now it's one woman in two, one man 